Hello guys, welcome back. So now we have, we saw about model attribute annotation. Okay. So um, in model attribute annotation, what we did, we made available this model as soon as the request handler mapping is executed. So this object is now available with, is now initialized and available with the data. Okay, so let's assume if there would have not been any model uh, attribute annotation over here, if and we requested for the same URL, Spring would not have thrown any error or any other message. But what it would have it would have it would have done was is sorry is user details would be initialized with null as its property values. So this was one point I missed it and I want to I, I covered it right now. So Spring would still instantiate the object by calling its default construct and make it available to the controller. This is the default object creation and dependency injection available in the controllers that is in a Spring MVC. If the object you need injected and can be created and, and it's ready for use without the need of any external arguments or any external parameters or whatever values then you are good to go but that is not the case everywhere. The object creation here would need something value, some values inside it. Okay. After the initialization. But there is another way where Spring makes it available in the absence of model attribute to have objects created and initialized with required properties. This is via Spring's data binding feature. As we have seen, we have a custom object over here, the custom model object. Or we can see custom bean or we'll see and we'll say cus created custom created object so suppose if we have data binding and it guarantees the full initialization of the object so from where those data comes in so we have add user over here so as soon as an HTML form whose action URL is safe and that points to a controller that is base annotated controller and those field names of the add user dot jsp corresponds to the properties of this user detail object that is my custom object over here and that is a part of method arguments in the using a model attribute annotation okay then after submitting the form, Spring would automatically extract the values sent through that form and bind it in the user detail object. Okay. And all the properties of this user details is now mapping with the form fields. So it creates a something you can imagine as a key value pair where name is a username and the value is the form value and what we have said to spring that the key to access this is user one okay and with this key I am accessing the value over here in success.jsp just check in here so now imagine we have user detail and we have strings auto binded with strings the text is some kind of string so it's fair enough but imagine we have some other data type present so I'm adding this data type over here I'm just creating the getters and setters for this to access those yes so now we have getters and setters for this so in order to do that I need some form fields to may match my custom object so I will add some form fields to match my custom object over here yes so I have added some custom object over here and go to my success.jsp and I will add those add the key of 
over here right so we'll go back and test spring add user yes so spring now automatically binds this long float sorry a uh, long date and array list with the form fields so this is some in this is one of the cool feature that spring provides to us so now imagine if you want to have some custom property inside my custom object then how would we do that so let's assume i have a custom property object custom object as private job detail i have added the class you can see so to save my time i have added the class correct so this is my custom property over here and i want spring to automatically bind the properties of this custom object so in order to bind this i need to sp set to spring what is the attribute name so i need to give the same attribute name with this property uh, that is related the same attribute name that is present in my custom object this is my attribute name job tet so i want to access job tet dot job id then uh, if i want to access let's uh, look at the job detail class so if i want to access job id and job desc from here so i need to give job det dot id dot description so job det dot job id job det of job description so here what i have done over here is same this is what i wanted over here so now spring the is this user bean that custom object is available but the object inside that object is not available yet so to make it available in the form name field we need to access it by its key by its property so that's the job date is a property so now in my success.jsp if i want to access so all uh, uh, i'll just say one thing yes this user details i am assigning the object a key the key is user1 so i can access all the value of this object using the key user1 so i'll go over here paste it and just see how it works okay uh, that's cool enough go over here just paste it add user.jsp okay so let's move on so this is my custom object over here as well yes 12 a s a all 3 4 5 6 7 8 right so all the values are mapped so how spring is getting those values from here as soon as the ma as the form is submitted so from the request headers it gets those values and maps with the parameters or the properties so that is the reason why we have kept the property same so this property name and the form attribute name sorry this form attribute name username should match with the object's property so this is one thing that we always need to keep in mind so now just look at one thing suppose i am not providing here the integer that is required over here suppose i am provide sas in place of integer so what spring will respond in this case let's see how spring reacts to this case oops so i have my auto binding feature av available uh, sorry i will not bind my result now okay so i'm not binding anything now we'll say more of it on the binding features okay so i'm providing mobile as s yeah, as it expects number but i'm giving it this so see here what spring does it sends a status of 400 because spring doesn't know now where to show this errors the location of the error is not known to spring uh, so for that we we use this uh, 
class over here this interface binding result interface will help us so what I'm doing over here I'm just redirecting if any error comes in I'm just redirecting the, redirecting the result to the add user so binding result catches all the errors actually so less and one more change I need to do if I want to catch those error what is the error I need to come over here and just see because I have added this prefix over here this tag library you need so for this tag library there is an error <coughs> and in place of path you need to put the key okay so this is the change that I need to do over here so if I come back to my application and see if now I am giving some wrong values spring and automatically throw an error yes fail to convert the property value java.lang.string to type.long so it the type mismatch is there spring will handle this as well so we we'll look at more at it how to customize these error messages and we'll proceed with that in the next session so guys thank you for watching the video if you have any question please mail to me i will have my mail id written okay. thanks guys